there have been two mysterious deaths at Toynton Grange Nursing Home. First, Victor Holroyd, whose wheelchair went over the cliff edge. And now Father Badley, who invited Adam Dalgleish to stay at the Grange, but died before he could confide in him. Victor's will has thrown suspicion on Maggie Hewson, the doctor's wife, and caused her to quarrel with Wilfred Anstey, who runs the Grange. Overnight, a young patient, Ursula Hollis, has disappeared. I didn't know Father Badley had died until I arrived at the Grange. Then I was told he left me all his books. Mr. Anstey is understandably keen that I should clear them out as soon as possible, so I thought I'd better check with you first, in case there's any legal problems. No, I shouldn't think so. No. No, that'll be perfectly all right. Ah, yeah, I thought so. We've written to you about the bequest. It must have arrived after you left. Good. Friend of his way in. Yes. Well, we can help you in any other way. Had you known him for some time? Uh, no, no. He was recommended to us by a Mrs. Millicent Hammett. She lives next door to her cottage. Uh, you may have met her. Not yet. She's been aware. I think she's Mr. Anstey's sister. Adopted sister, which perhaps explains her rather ambivalent feelings towards him. Anyway... Uh, they've all been rather unsettled by poor Victor Holroyd's death. Oh, he was a client too? Yes. Uh, he rewrote his will just before he died. <laughs> Pure malice. Especially against poor Maggie. Oh, do you know Mrs. Hewson well? You ask a lot of questions. But you don't have to answer them, Mr. Lola. I wouldn't want to break any professional confidences, that's all. I met Maggie at the conservative dance last winter. She's great fun. She gets bored out of her mind down here. Who wouldn't? Did she tell you I was a policeman? <sighs> I thought I was doing rather well, Commander. So, what have you really come to see me for? Did Father Badley ever speak to you about changing his will? No, never. Why, well, was there any question of it? Has anyone else ever asked you about it? Anyone else? Uh, who, for example? You don't mean Wilfred? Why him? Well, who else could you mean? I mean, everyone else knows that they're not going to benefit. Uh, Michael left all his money to the Grange. He may have told Grace Willison that she was going to get the Bureau, but I shouldn't think that's worth a great deal. So he has talked to you about it, then? No. Uh, never. As far as I know, he had... Um, no reason to think there were any problems, and there weren't, were there? I saw some matches like these up at the Black Tower. That's not entirely surprising. 
I took Maggie to lunch at the Tudor house on her birthday, the 21st of June, if you care to check. Uh, she must have taken the matches for Father Badley. She's very kind like that, very sweet. I'm sure he appreciated it. The 21st of June, that's mid That was the day Victor Holroyd died. Was it? If you say so. I'm very bad on dates. Yes, of course I remember Father Badley. You heard that he was dead? Yes, I'm sorry. He was a dear man. Except he would smoke that awful pipe of his. Not in the ward, but he always managed to find somewhere. You could smell it a mile off. He was looking over some papers for me, but they don't seem to be among his things. And I just wondered if he'd posted them onto me in London while he was here. I don't think he sent anything to London. I posted a couple of things for him, but they were both local. You sure? Oh, yes, yes. I have to look at the addresses to make sure I put them in the right box. In fact, they were both to the same address. I remember thinking that was a bit odd. Was it Toynton Grange? Yes, that's right. How clever. Can you remember the names? Mm, I'm afraid not. I think one was to a man and the other to a woman. Well, um, could it have been Anstey or Miss Willison? Perhaps. The names ring a bell, but I couldn't swear to it. Why, was it important? Yes, yes. Do you know we got in touch with anyone else? Not as far as I know. But I'm not on duty 24 hours a day. It does feel like it sometimes. <laughs> Did he telephone or anyone? He made just one call that I know of. But he might have made more. Well, was that a Toynton Grange? I've no idea. He went and made it down in the outpatient's waiting hall. Now, wait a moment. He couldn't have been phoning Toynton Grange because he asked me if there was a London directory down there, which there is. Does that help? Yes. Thank you, Sister Brigham. Is this really to do with the papers he was working on for you? Ah, no, I've not been entirely frank with you. I'm a policeman. <laughs> really? You don't look like a policeman. Don't I? That is meant to be a compliment. Well, then I'll, um, I'll take it as such. Goodbye. Bye. Come on, Dennis. Good afternoon, Commander. Good afternoon. I want to know the pleasure. Oh, I just repay my debts. I borrowed a jar of coffee, that's all. Well, you've just been climbing near the Black Tower. If I'd thought about it, I would have brought you back a few clues to Victor's murder. Do oh, you think he's been murdered? No. Highly unlikely, I'd have said. But even if he was, you wouldn't find anything there. Not after our wonderful local constabulary have trampled all over the scene of the crime. Do you climb? I used to. I could lend you some gear, if you like. It was many years ago. You're not that old. It's marvellous. You ought to try it again. I don't think so. Wilfred used to climb with us. He's about as old as you. But then, of course, he has God on his side. Do you? Well, has he given it up? Yes. Some fool frayed his rope. One of the resident jokers venting their spleen, I dare say. Oh, really? What did the police do about it? Well, nothing. Wilfred refused to tell them. Well, there you are. I've gone and grasped him. That's what comes of being such an honest, upright citizen. Well, you seem to have an awful lot of spare time for an honest, upright citizen. I hope you're not jealous, Commander. Curious, that's all. Sounds to me like the dreary voice of English Puritanism. Well, it uh, sounds to me as though you've got a private income. But you're sharper than I thought. We're going to get on well. Is that everything? Yes. The Commander thinks he has a murder on his hands, Dennis. Really? Yeah, Mr. Gorse may hear Joe. But there are some things that worry you. What sort of things? Well, about Father Badley, mostly. Well, like what? Well, I'd like to know who broke the lock on his desk, what happened to the final part of his diary, and who visited him last on the night he died. Well, it was Grace, Grace Willison. Yeah, I don't think so, no. But where does Victor come into all this? What? Do you think there's some link between the two deaths? Is 
There's absolutely nothing wrong with you, Wilfred. For a man of your age, you're in remarkably good condition. Dot insisted, I see. She lives in daily fear that I'm about to collapse under the pressure of things. <laughs> She's absolutely right. It's men of your age who suddenly keel over without any warning. I wish you wouldn't keep saying men of my age. I'm not quite dead. Eric, where are you? Oh, no, I just won't be a minute. Oh, you, my... what an unexpected treat. I don't think I've seen you without your habit before. Nothing wrong, I hope. Wilfred's just having a check-up. Has... How was it? The shock of hearing Ursula's not coming back. We don't know that she's not coming back. Don't we? No, we don't. All we know. We just felt homesick. What an order of minicab at 11 o'clock at night without telling a soul. Come on, Wilfred. She's left for good. That's what she's done. Well, she might have been embarrassed or been afraid that we would try and stop her. And why didn't her husband phone till this morning? He didn't say she wasn't coming back, just that she was safe and not to worry. Do you know, you are amazing. You don't have an antidote for incurable optimism, do you, Trej? Of course he didn't say it. He's probably still sweating blood trying to get her to change her mind. I'm sure that's not the case. Oh, you're sure. You pretend you're sure. The real truth's too awful to think about, isn't it? I don't think I can be accused of avoiding the truth. Why? Now, can we just talk about something no. else? I'd like to hear Maggie's interpretation of the truth. Well, if you will excuse me, I've got other things to do. Such a forceful personality. So, tell me the unavoidable truth. You know as well as I do. You mean if I can't keep a docile girl like Ursula here, who can I keep? Ah, you put it so much better than I could. Oh, yes. So you admit it? I've given it serious consideration. Of course I have. I desperately need the money she brings us. I see. Maggie, I'd like you to understand something. What? I have to appear positive. I have to seem strong and confident. Because I am the Grange. I'm its figurehead. People expect things of me. I know, Wilfred. It could be easier if I had your strength to lean on. What do you mean? Don't you know? No, I don't think I do. I'd like you to help me. As a partner. Partner? In a sense. In what sense, Wilfred? I need someone. Like you. Someone to give me their strength when I'm feeling weak. You could do that. Couldn't you, Maggie? Do you know, Wilfred, you are peculiar. The way you talk, I don't know whether you're propositioning me or asking for a blood transfusion. I'm simply asking for your support, Maggie, that's all. Of course, I should have realised by now that I was wasting my breath. I'm capable of doing it. I always did it for Michael. Yes, but he is 30 years older than me. I've only slept in it for one night. <laughs> Today's laundry day. As a matter of fact, I think Dot counts the sheets. She found I'd missed one. It'd be like the Spanish Inquisition. Ah, Dot's strict, is she? Oof, putting it mildly. Why will forget her so cheaply, of course? I don't understand. Don't you know about Dot? No. It's in all the papers. She was a staff nurse at some geriatric hospital. She hit a patient. She claimed she only touched her, but the old woman fell against a locker and nearly died. Was there an inquiry? Oh, yes, with lots of publicity. The woman sounded quite impossible, but uh, even so. They decided she wasn't guilty of deliberate cruelty, but criticised her for losing control. So she left the hospital and disappeared. Well, how did she end up here? Wilfred read about the case, thought she'd been treated unjustly, and offered her a job here. That way he got himself a cut price matron and her undying loyalty. Ah. Anything else I can help you with? Yes, why didn't any of the medical staff look in here on Father Badly the night he died? 
He had only just come out of hospital. That was a total misunderstanding. That's all I can say. Someone should have checked up on him. I mean, Eric or Dot or Dennis or me. Well, then why didn't you? There's no excuse. That everyone seemed to think that someone else would be looking in on him. Well, perhaps Dr. Houston did. Oh, no. He'd have mentioned it. Here. Here's that. Thank you. Dot was here when I got back from the hospital with Michael. How did Father badly seem to you, then? All right. Tired, of course. I unpacked his things. It wasn't a lot to unpack, really. Just pyjamas, toothbrush, a couple of books. Oh, his Bible and prayer book. Yes, that's right. You did know him well. And his diary. Yes, they're still there when I put them. Are you sure you unpacked his diary? Oh, yes, I put that on his desk. I would be most annoyed if I'd forgotten it. I was scribbling away at it when I came to collect him from the ward. Hello? Where are you both? In here. I bought you some coffee. Who's that? Millicent. Oh, pretend I'm not here if you like. <laughs> I just got back from Leamington. I had such a wonderful time, I couldn't bear the idea of sitting in there all afternoon on my own, getting depressed. Coffee's in the living room. Mrs. Hammett. Hmm. Commander Dalgleish, isn't it? How do you do? Ah, oh, good you've met. Wilfred warned me about you when he picked me up at the station. He seems rather twitchy. Why would that be? I've no idea and I can't imagine why he should warn you about me. It wasn't so much what he said, more tone of voice. He likes to keep our family skeletons firmly behind lock and key, you see. I'm afraid I'm nowhere near so discreet. You do take coffee? Yes, thank you. Milk, uh, no sugar. I would have one, thanks, Millicent. I really must be going. Commander Dalgleish was worried that no one looked in on Michael the night he died. Well, I was next door. He only had to knock on the wall. He knew I was there. Ah, but you you didn't pop in. I'm afraid I didn't. When Helen and Dot left, they said he wasn't to be disturbed. He was quite firm about it. And what time did you leave? About seven, after we'd made him supper. Dot put him in his pyjamas, but he insisted on wearing his cassock over them. Because Miss Willison was coming here for confession? I suppose so, yes. Mm. What time did she leave? At 8.15. I was watching a film on television. It was just ending as she left. I heard her say goodnight to him and the front door shut. Did you hear Father Badley say anything to her? No. No, I'm afraid I didn't. Oh, Millicent, you have your television on so loud. I'm surprised you hear anything. <laughs> Do you? I like to draw the curtains and turn it up a bit, yes. Forget about the ghastly things going on in the world outside. But I heard Grace even so. Tell me, why was Father Badley cremated? You better talk to Millicent about that. She's the one who insisted on cremation. Who told you that? Wilfred said you were positive. Michael had always wanted to be cremated. Well, that's the first I've heard of it. Wilfred really does turn things round. So you didn't say it then? Certainly not. As a matter of fact, I've always disapproved of filling up good ground with rotting bodies, but that's entirely personal. And I'm sure Michael wouldn't care one way or the other, as long as he had the correct word said over him at the end. I think you're wrong. He would have wanted an orthodox Christian burial. Anyway, he was buried afterwards. It all caused an awful lot of inconvenience. We had to have a second doctor's signature, and Eric, Dr. Hewson, was not pleased. Why, did someone disagree with his original diagnosis? Oh, no. Michael died of a heart attack, all right. But Dr. Hewson's quite busy enough without having to cope with that kind of thing. I'm sorry, Millicent. I might have realised that such a mad idea would be Wilfred's and not yours. I'll see you again soon. Yes, it was. Can you think of any reason why your brother went to all that extra trouble and expense? That's easy. It was guilt. Guilt? Yes. When you've exploited someone when they're living, naturally you want to do all you can to make amends once they're dead. That's human nature, I'd have thought. Perhaps so. Tell me, if Father Badley had knocked on this wall, would you have heard him? But he didn't knock on the wall. Well, if your television was on, you may not have heard him. Well, I'm reasonably sure. Anyway, after 9.30, I wasn't really listening because I thought someone had come in to settle him for the night. One of the nurses saw him. Eric. Well, why didn't you tell me this before when Miss Rayner was here? Well, obviously I was wrong, wasn't I? I feel stupid mentioning it now, but... What exactly do you think you heard? It was more what I thought I saw. I was making myself a hot drink and I wondered if Michael might want one, but when I went to the front door to go and ask, I thought I saw a figure in a habit disappearing into the darkness. Uh, did you uh, come and knock on this door? No, because all his lights were off, you see. 
That's why I knew I must have imagined it. I mean, Helen or Eric wouldn't have left the cottage completely dark, would they? They'd have left some sort of light on for him at least. I'm sure. You shouldn't have come back. Not out of the blue like this. Don't keep saying that. You could have run first. I think she's enjoying this, you know that. And you think I like coming and finding all my clothes in boxes and my books and things stuck in a cupboard? And there wasn't room for everything. It was the only sensible thing to do. And was it sensible not telling me Mog was staying here? Is that what you call it? I needed someone to help with the rent. And does he? Well, I will when I've got a bit of money. I've said I will. And when will that be? When you get your poems published? That's right. Do you honestly believe such nonsense, Steve? How long has he been talking like this? I don't see what it's got to do with you, Ursula. It's my business how I live my life, not yours. But we're married, Steve. Of course it's my business. Well, just don't go on about it. About what? About being married? About any of it. Look, I'm not having an affair. I just forgot to tell you Mog was staying here. Well, I'm sorry. Why can't we just leave it at that? Here, yeah, here. Yeah. I came back because of an anonymous letter. What it said scared me. All right, it wasn't true. I suppose I should be pleased about that. So why aren't you? Because I don't see much difference, as a matter of fact. You've been just as secretive since Mog moved in as if you had been having an affair. That's because he knew you wouldn't approve. He can't bear people disapproving of him. Oh, shut up. Well, that's true, I know it is. But it's more than that. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't want me to come back, do you? It's perfectly simple. You're much happier living here with your old friend with no responsibilities like two overgrown students. You said that, not me. But you haven't denied it, have you? Perhaps he just needs a bit of space. I mean, life changes, doesn't it? Just because you've got a marriage certificate doesn't mean you've got him on a ball and chain forever. But he hasn't changed. That's the trouble. He hasn't changed one bit since I first met him. Perhaps he thinks he's perfect as he is. He hasn't begun to grow up, nor have you. There's no need to insult Mog. Don't worry about me. I'm sorry I've got multiple sclerosis, Steve. You can't imagine how sorry I am. I know how you hate it. But if it hadn't been that, it would have been something else. Babies or ageing parents or anything that would have restricted your precious so-called freedom. But you can't avoid responsibility forever. You can't spend the rest of your life getting drunk in a pub, dreaming about whatever it is you dream about. Why not? I intend to. Because it'll catch up with you one day, that's why. Don't preach at me, please. I can do without it. Don't worry, that's the end of the sermon. I'm going to ring the Grange now and tell them I'm coming back. For good this time. If it hadn't been for my husband, I'd still own half of all this. Oh? You mean you uh, sold your share? I sold it to Wilfred to pay my husband's gambling debts, which is why I'm dependent on Wilfred's charity now. If I wasn't, I'd be with my friends in Leamington like a shot. Well, your husband was a gambler? Well, horses are better than women. I'm sorry? That's how I used to cheer myself up. Horses might be more expensive, but they're a damn sight less humiliating. Oh. Do you think your brother will ever sell the Grange? Of course he won't. I know that for a fact. But he does seem to be thinking very seriously about handing it over to a trust. Mm, there's a world of difference between letting a charity have it and selling it for profit. You mean he'd never be able to run it if he sold it? There's that, of course, but that's only half of it. You see, if he sells the Grange, he'll have to give me half the proceeds. He signed a document saying that's what he'd do. It was Bob Loder's idea, and Wilfred didn't object. It was at a time when he thought he'd never need to sell. A kindly act that didn't cost him anything, he thought. The sort of kindly act he's so good at. If he ever does hand over the Grange to the Ridgewell Trust, it won't be because of the nursing home, whatever he says. It'll be so that he doesn't have to give his sister her share of the money from the sale. How's that for charity? By the way, I heard you were worried about Michael's bureau. The broken lock? Well, I can tell you it wasn't broken the night before he died. How do you know that? 
because I was writing some letters and I ran out of envelopes and I knew Michael wouldn't mind if I borrowed one, so I went next door, but the bureau was locked and the key wasn't there. But it was broken when your brother went to look for the will the day after he died. So she says, of course, she was very keen to get his hands on that will. But you've no proof that he did break the lock. I've no proof anyone did. The cottage was full of people running in and out. But I do know Michael didn't break it himself. Huh. Because I found the key just before lunch the day after he died. It was in an old tea caddy in the larder. It must have been where he always kept it. I, I was just looking for any little bits of food he might have left. I knew he wouldn't mind. So what did you do with it? I, I put it in my pocket in case it got lost when the cottage was cleared. You can have it if you like. <laughs> I doubt it. If you say anything you like. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, but not until you've sorted out what you want. Well, please sit down. I can quite see why Michael left you his books. They weren't all religious works. No, no, there's uh, quite a collection of novels and poetry. A lot of first editions, I mean, there. Oh, this is one of my favourites The Diary of a Nobody. To Father Baddeley for his birthday with love from Adam. I bought this from Mr. Snelling in Norwich and he let me have it cheap because of the red stain on page 20, but I've tested it and it isn't blood. Mm. The inscription reduced the value of the book rather more than the stain did. <laughs> I'm sure Michael wouldn't think so. Oh, I must have been unbearably arrogant as a child. Well, because you thought it was a blood stain? Well, I did have only a very basic chemistry, sir. <laughs> and an equally basic desire to ferret out the truth. <laughs> Why do you look surprised? Well, that's exactly what Father Badley said the last time I saw him. We often thought alike. Oh, I brought you some eggs, some fresh eggs. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. You must let me pay for them. Oh, nonsense. No, I insist. <laughs> you're not in Scotland Yard now. You'll do as you're told for once. Now, which would you prefer, some more Mouton Cadet 78, or shall we go down market a little? Just fill the bloody glass, Henry. Oh, well, that's how you feel. Certainly the table wine. Why don't you tell me the big secret? If there really is one. Well, I just want us to be friends, Maggie, that's all. Since Victor died, you must help the need of someone. Come on, Henry. In many cases, you've looked so unhappy recently. I wouldn't want to make things worse. I wouldn't want you to suffer any further delusions. For God's sake, Henry, tell me what it is. Well, you probably noticed it yourself. Henry. What? Eric and Helen. Probably nothing serious. I believe you met Millicent today. I hope she wasn't too unfair about Wilfred. Well, she resents the fact that he owns the Grange. That's pretty clear. <laughs> but did she tell you why? Did she tell you about the will? No. She was an only child, you see, until her parents adopted Wilfred. How old was she then? Well, I'm not quite sure. Five or six, I think. Old enough to be the apple of her parents' eye. Ah. Exactly. So finally, Wilfred got his share. He seems to be very good at getting his way. Oh, don't say it like that, Adam. If he hadn't, he'd never have been able to dedicate his life to the nursing home. Do you like him? Oh, yes, of course I do. But not in the way you could like Michael. I don't think anybody could. Because Wilfred doesn't like himself. That's why he dedicated his life to the home. He could never understand why God chose to cure him before anybody else. He feels permanently unworthy of the love God showed him. And Father Badley? Did everyone like him? Oh, everyone loved him. Then why did someone write him an anonymous letter? What? I found it in his desk. Didn't he tell you about it? No, oh, he didn't. What's the matter? Well, it's odd. But I received a letter, too, a couple of days before Victor died. It was obscene. Have you still got it? No, I haven't. Well, the letter he got wasn't obscene. It wasn't even... Particularly upsetting. It was just, well, it was just childish. Did you tell the police about your letter? No, I didn't. Why not? They'd have been interested, surely. Well, I told you and you're the police, aren't you? <laughs> Look, I'm a friend of Father Badley's who happens to be a policeman when he's not on holiday. That's just talk, Commander. Clever talk, and I don't believe a word of it. I assure you it's not. Oh, nonsense. I'm not entirely naive. Tell me. 
Why did Father Badley write to Wilfred from hospital? Did he? I didn't know he had. Well, didn't he tell you about that? You were his closest friend. You know, I thought a friend of Michael's would be a friend of mine. But you're not the person he knew at all. You're like Julius. You spend too long playing games to know what true friendship is. I'm sorry if I've upset you. Are you? Yes, I am, but I must ask you this again. <laughs> you see. You received an anonymous letter just before Victor died. Why didn't you tell the police about it then? I'd rather not talk about it. That's just about oh, not at this very moment, I hope. Maggie, what's the matter? Are you going to let me in? Or shall I insult you outside in the hall where everyone can hear me? No, then, where have you hidden him? Under the bed? Come on out, Rez, your time is up. Are you decent? Oh, for God's sake, Alan. Oh, it's all right, I have seen him without his clothes on. When was it now? I'm sorry, Maggie. Oh, why be sorry? I'm glad to see you've got such a nice new dressing gown. The other one was getting so old and Oh, do shut up! I mean, is it really, Eric? It's not just ones you keep for, how can I put it, casual visitors. Oh, come on, Maggie. You're hardly the one to start criticising other people's morals. Do stop it, please, both of you. I'm sorry, Maggie, but, well, these things happen, and I, I don't think the blame is entirely on my side. Oh, really? So now it's my fault. Tell me more. Well, Eric, yes, don't. I will tell her. No, you won't. I will. Look, Maggie, you're going to have to face facts. Eric loves me and he doesn't love you. I don't want to be brutal about don't it. Don't you? It sounds as though you're quite enjoying it. And do you love him? Yes. Oh, well, I'm delighted for you both. But has it occurred to you that you haven't had a chance yet to see him in his full glory? Well, I'm not talking about me. Has it told you yet about Victor's legacy, about how devastated he was when he didn't get it? about it. You're wasting your And has he told you why he was so keen? Why we were both so keen? Because it would, would have given us another chance. We could have started again together. It's not what he told me. Well, he wouldn't be likely to, would he? He told me he wanted to set himself free of you. To set you free of each other. Did you? You better tell us. Well, you're both so clever. Why don't you work it out for yourself? Do you want to go first or shall I? Oh, I, uh, I was looking for Wilfred. He's resting, I'm afraid. Perhaps you could help me then. Of course. I saw a wheelchair when I was shown around. Do you know if it was like the one Victor Holroyd used? It isn't like it. It's exactly the same. They come from the same suppliers. Why do you ask? Well, I just wanted to check how the brakes work, that's all. You've no objection, have you? Yes, I do. The greatest possible objection. Why is that? We have enough problems on our hands without snoopers and meddlers. People who won't leave us alone. The police conducted a perfectly thorough investigation after Victor's death. Why, you need to come poking and crying. Are you refusing me permission to look, then? No, of course not. Go ahead. Thank you. good of you to get up on my account, but there was really no need. I had already woken up, as a matter of fact. Dot is extraordinarily protective. It does seem very simple and straightforward, doesn't it? Foolproof, I'd have thought. Yeah. That's what makes it so worrying. I've written to the manufacturer. There's clearly a basic flaw in the thing somewhere. Oh, you sound very sure about it. Of course I am. Why don't we give it a practice run? See for ourselves how easily it could have happened. What do you 
think? Well, it slopes down to the cliff edge. If the brakes had failed, it would have picked up quite a speed. Mm. And, of course, you'd have had no chance of stopping. So it must have been an accident. On the other hand, the slope starts a good way back from the edge. he have had plenty of time, I'd have thought, to throw himself out of the chair or tip it over. Perhaps he was too frightened. He didn't think quickly enough. I doubt that instinct. It would usually take over. You're the expert, of course. Poor Victor. Earl Grey, is it? Yes. That must be what he likes about you, your class. With me, it's tea bags or nothing. Eric's mother led him to expect a little more from life. Don't talk to me about Eric's mother. I'd swing for that woman for what she did to him. Oh, he wouldn't get the chance. I'd have swung for her years ago if she was still around. I do wonder if it's worth it, don't you? All this bother over a man. Do you mean that? Well, it does seem ridiculous, doesn't it? You and I could be perfectly good friends. Don't you want him, then? I didn't say that. I thought that was what you meant. I've told you, we love each other. Oh, yes, but do you want to marry him? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with him? The rest of your life is an awfully long time, but as far as I know, yes. We make each other very happy. What more can you ask? Oh, well, I can't compete with that. I'd better wish you good luck, then. What do you mean? You're going to give him a divorce? Oh, no. No, you've got me wrong. I, I don't love Eric. I'm past all that, but... He has taken the best years of my life, and I'm not going to let him go that easily. Not till I'm ready. What did you wish me good luck for, then? Oh, haven't you seen boxers before the fight? They shake hands. It's the same thing. Did you know that Father Badley wasn't the only one to receive an anonymous letter? Yes, I did know. In fact, I'm beginning to think I'm one of the few here who hasn't received one. Which probably strikes you as quite inexplicable. Well, who else was there? Michael told me that Maggie and Henry had received these letters. And you chose not to tell me about this earlier? I took that decision, yes. Why? Because I was ashamed to think that anyone here might have written anything quite so disgusting. Was there anyone else? Oh, dear. Well, and this morning, poor little Jenny came to me. She was very upset about Ursula disappearing. She told me that both she and Ursula had had letters. And you know if any of them kept them? No, I don't think so. From what I've heard, they were best destroyed before anyone else could read them. Because they were obscene? If their recipient's reactions are anything to go by, yes. I didn't read them myself before you asked. But you read Father Badley's letter. When you showed it to me, yes. Would you say that was obscene? No. Just rather childish and pathetic. I agree. I think his letter was written by someone else. Really? Do you have any idea why the letters were sent? I do. Yes. So you'll say it's paranoia, probably. Oh. Well, if the Ritual Trust found out about the letters, they might have second thoughts about taking over the Grange. Certainly with me at the helm. They might think I was unable to run a happy ship. So you'd be forced to sell the place instead? That's what someone might hope, yes. Except I never would. I'd die before I'd let that happen. So who would you say is most likely to have sent them? Who do you say? Well, who has the greatest motive? Your sister? The place would fetch a lot of money. With 50% of it, she'd uh, be able to move to Leamington, wouldn't she? That is what she wants, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But there are other less obvious motives. Like hatred. The desire to destroy something someone has spent years building up. Who would do that? Well, it, it must be obvious.
I'll take that, yes. It's very nice of you to do all this. I know. <laughs> no, it is. No. When will your husband be back? Mm, not till well after closing time. He's with his friend. They have this theory that if they can still stand up, they've not had a good time. Do you want a drink? Not while I'm driving. Very boring, I'm afraid. I wish Steve was. Yes. You'll be driving us to Lord's, won't you? That's right. You're coming too, aren't you? That'll be nice. Well, I might as well take an active part now I'm a fixture. It won't be for long, so don't worry. And it'll probably work out with Steve if that's what you want. Is it? I don't think it is, no. I don't want to spend the rest of my life at the Grange, but I don't want to spend it with Steve. I wouldn't have said that last week. Well, you might not say it next week, so be careful. There's so many things I gave up because of him. That's what I'm beginning to realise. I just chucked it all away, everything he didn't believe in. Because I was so scared I'd lose him. Well, that's sad. Fortunately, I saw the error of my ways. You won't be wanting this, I hope. At Toynton Grange, they'd never speak to me again. Could be a good reason. <laughs> You're being terribly kind, Dennis. I can't imagine why. I've had practice. Well, what's that meant to mean? Nothing. Why do you work at the Grange, Dennis? Wilfred doesn't pay very well, does he? No. But you can live there very cheaply. Well, it's impossible not to. So you can save money. Anyway, I like the place. And what are you saving for? My mother's in a nursing home. She's got a weak heart. There's nobody else to pay for her, so I have to do it. I'm sorry I didn't know. Well, why should you? Why don't you get her to come to the Grange? Wouldn't Wilfred give you special rates? He might. But I prefer to keep my professional and personal lives separate. Thanks very much. It's okay, I'll close it, if you like. Oh, great, thanks. since before tea. He was with Mr. Dalgleish.
Thank you. 